Right then, to continue on with my little tinkering, um, I'm going to be doing a Commodore Amiga. Uh, I've done both Spectrums and they're working wow, beautifully. Um, so now I'm going to turn my attention to the Amiga. Right, so this is a power brick for the Amiga. Uh, it's a beastly thing. Uh, this one's quite light, to be fair. Uh, there are heavier ones. Um, but this is 30 something years old so we don't trust it with anything that's over 30 don't trust it <laughs> so don't trust me <laughs> but trust me so what we're going to do is um well i'm gonna i'm gonna have a look at it on the bench uh and then we're just going to check it out make sure all the power is right um before i hook it up to the amiga i've had the, the amiga for a couple of months now and i've not done anything with it purposely I saving it to do this one so i had my two spectrums that i did uh i didn't really have a power supply for that i bought a switching power supply but i'd also got my bench power supply so that's easy to do because it's just one voltage it was nine volt dc flat that was it and i set it to about one amp and that was ample enough power and that did me and then i got a, a switching power supply from uh the ebay <laughs> it's uh yeah uh i checked that out that was that was that's good enough and but this one it needs uh plus 12 minus 12 and plus 5 volts so there's various different voltages that i can't get from my bench power supply um i could get from like uh an atx power supply but i don't have any or any of them anyway so right so let's uh Whack this on and uh, see if we can figure out what's uh, what's up with it. Right then, so I've got um, my multimeter with uh, a couple of probes on it at the end, just because they're just fiddly to get into all the little parts. So I'm going to pop one on the uh, ground in the middle, and then I'm just going to use the other one to nip onto the other posts and right, let me check that one there so it's plus 12 we should begin plus 12 on that one um oh dear <laughs> so that's that's eight volts so we are already four volts under that's that's ridiculously low that is so yeah that's not good so i mean it's no good to start with right the center pin is minus 12 and the wait is that right two volts 2.1 volts seriously <laughs> that, is, that is a poorly power supply um yeah we'll check the five volts as well but that is going to be that's well it's, it's it's a dead stick uh three volts so yeah that is it uh, the other pin the the shield pin uh basically that goes to um earth on um uh on our, on the british one anyway on, on like the one in the uk we have three pins so we've got live neutral and earth so the shield basically is is wired into that it's just basically uh it, it, if there's anything rogue it goes into that right let's take it apart warning 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 uh I've had this powered on, so it will hold like a residual charge uh, in the capacitor, and it is quite a lot. I can't remember what the, the size of the capacitor is, but it can give you a wallop enough to, to kill you in some places. Uh, um, so anything that's live, even though you've unplugged it, you should always, always be careful. Um, I'm not a professional, by the way, but anybody with half a brain and half an intelligence knows that you don't mess about with electricity. <laughs> all right so i'm just gonna crack this open uh, just four screws in the case it feels like ridiculously light so i'm not expecting uh, like a real big power supply because some of the bigger ones like the they filled them full of resin to uh that help dissipate the heat but these are are really small all right then there we go all right be careful not to touch anything inside um there is a, that is the one big capacitor that's near the brown wire just under there that's the one that holds the charge so i'll uh just get this 
out. I think there's three screws in this one. Just to uh, hold it down to the plastic case. There we go. I am very careful in there, but you shouldn't really. I mean, I'm touching the metal part of a screwdriver. You shouldn't even be doing that. <laughs> right, I'm going to whip it out and flip it over. Uh, there's that big capacitor. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to, just to make sure, I'm just going to short it. Because a capacitor, is, it's like a battery. It stores an immense amount of energy and dissipates it just literally straight away it can it can fill itself up and empty itself in like milliseconds so that's what uh, gives you a nasty kick so if i just short these two out just do it a couple of times it should be okay uh i'll get the multimeter as well just to just to make sure uh if i just set it to auto it should should go on anyway so i'll just uh, just test across them points just to make sure all right i'll just take the uh, probing leads off and just use the pins all right it's hard to tell it's hard to tell i mean i've got poor lighting and stuff as well but yeah the, the numbers that are there that is basically that's ohms right then so it should be safe to touch <laughs> it should be as he grabs it um so i'm not going to mess about i'm not i i was going to like look at repairing it but um these power supplies are are old and the newer modern equivalents are are well better i could have used like an atx power supply um like a pc power supply that's got it, it, more than enough uh, voltage rails and amps to to uh for what we need um but yeah i'm just gonna basically just pull the cables out and use the the leads on this one I'm just going to save it, and then the circuit board will... Well, I, I, I don't think I could actually salvage anything off it. I should have clipped the leads a little bit shorter to the board. Uh, you'll see why in a bit anyway. But uh, yeah, I'm going to save everything on that. All right, I bought myself um, a brand new switching power supply from eBay, no less. <laughs> uh, but uh, having a look at it, it was supposed to be um, be able to fit inside the plastic case. Uh, that was one of the main reasons why I actually bought it because, like, uh, I wanted something that I could use the old case and just uh, basically update it with something modern internally. So this is the RT fifty B, and as you can see, look what what length we got on there: one hundred and fifty eight fifty nine. So, yeah, I mean, the the plastic case is way too big for the plastic case. There's no way, no way it's going to fit in. Uh, all the voltages are correct, what we want. And it's got 5 amp, 5 amp, 1 amp across the rails, which is more than enough. It's, uh, I think, an Amiga draw something like 500 milliamp. So this is the power supply that I got off eBay. And that was the... That was a specified, uh, specified size of what I was looking at. So it was supposed to be like 99 by like 98 by something by 36. And it wasn't. Uh, so there are alternatives. Uh, I went on thing, thing of this and I find myself a nice little case. But it was for a different power supply. So... Um, it, it had different sizes so I, I had to basically do a little bit of a web searching uh, and find out the actual uh, sizes of uh, of that one that this one catered for but this is just something I can just uh, whack together on my 3d printer but yeah so that is the one that it I have that is the case that I have um, and you can see it's it's a totally different serial number altogether. I've uh, downloaded a, a, it into a little editing program. It's just a basic Microsoft one, actually. But uh, yeah, so I downloaded the file. 
took the measurements and just basically extended it about 30 mil just enough to uh, get the other power supply on it in so that should be what we need uh apologies for the shaky camera work <laughs> but that's it uh, on my 3d printer whirring and clicking away <clears throat> So it's, it, I like tinkering. I, I've, I've built a 3D printer. Uh, well, I have it from parts and stuff. Um, and I've upgraded it as well. So it's it's beyond like factory spec. Um, I like to do things like that. I like to take things and then make them better. So that's my little prototyping thing that I like to do. There we go. So that's the case in its raw format. Lovely and clean. And uh, the power supply fits in as it should. Just a little room for the wires. So everything fits snug. And I've got a Put some like little fixing bolts and stuff in it as well. Our camera's terrible. So yeah. Right, the next problem I came across. I didn't really check this out first. I just thought, oh, it's an Amiga power supply. Uh, there are different uh, types of uh, power supply. Obviously, I mentioned earlier that some have got resin in and some are lighter. Uh, some are for the um, uh, Amiga Plus and some are for the like standard Amiga. Well, they didn't use standard switches or, or moldings. So this one is a little bit bigger. So this one is like 12 millimeters inside and the one that i did was eight i mean i could have gone back to the editor and um, basically redone a uh, a 3d printed case but i was like oh, they take too long, too long um you know anybody that's got a 3d printer knows that if you print something of size it can take a good part of a day to do and uh i mean this project's been like sort of two months in the making <laughs> it's just some of these little little things that I didn't think about at the end uh, I, I thought oh it, it'll be all right it's an Amiga power supply it can't be any different but yeah so it's a different model of a power supply uh, and as you can see everything else is uh, crazy bigger or smaller in fact so that was like what nearly 30 mil that's a 30 mil switch so yeah that's definitely not going to fit so I'm going to have to either reprint a case uh, with the correct sizes on or do a little bit of modding. I opted for the modding. <laughs> Fix it, Jim. Fix it. Oh, yeah. Right. Good old knife. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim down till I'm not, not, oh, I'm not going to cut it all the way through. I'm just going to cut down uh, until I get to the cable. It's quite, it's soft. So you can get there and trim it all away, which leaves me a little bit of a, a thing there. So I can like trap it between the plastics, put a zip tie on the end and pull it up. It's going to be a bit, a bit loose, but uh, yeah, we can sort that out. Just 
just make sure it sits in nice before I uh, nip the cable tie up. It's basically just to stop the cables pulling through. I mean, I don't expect to be yanking the uh, cable out anyway. Uh, the molded uh, just for protection. So now I'm going to get my little friend. Uh, it's just a hot glue gun. And I'm just going to just put little dabs. Basically to, just to hold everything in place. Just to help with the uh, cable stress as well. I mean, I don't intend swinging it around my head <laughs> or anything like that. I mean, it's just, just going to sit in a place, but, uh, you know, safety first. Lovely. Right, I've got a, a three pin neon uh, switch in my little parts bin, so I'm going to use that. And you should, it's plenty big enough. In fact, it's probably it's the, the same, uh, the same size, it's a little shorter, but uh, it will fit. Um, will fit quite nice in there so it's, it's i think the size is 12 mil so it's a little bit under but nothing to nothing to shout about and then i think the overall shroud is about 30 something mil yeah Right, I missed the part. There was a part where I was wiring it all in. So if we have a look, so on the switch, you've got a power line that comes in. Uh, the accessory is basically the power line goes out. So that, that is where your switch goes. Uh, the ground is for like the neon light. Now the ground is, is basically the bronze colored pin on the actual switch. Uh, and then on the other side, there they are the voltages that go to the lead on the Amiga. Uh, as we've seen earlier. So we've got the minus 12, plus 12, um, grand, and plus Right then, so, ready, pop, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> yep, nobody died, <laughs> we can see the little green light, so all I'm going to do now is just um, test the voltages, uh, there is like a potentiometer on there, so basically you could just control the vo voltage, uh, it's a bit hard to see because it's, it's hard to sync, but it's got uh, 5.2 volts, so there is a little adjuster on there. So I'm just going to adjust it uh, down and bring it bang on five volts. The thing with these power supplies is like, well, any power supply that is made for the unit, it doesn't matter if they're a little bit over because when you put a load on the actual power supply itself, it will go down to the specified voltage. But with these newer ones, they are over specced. So you have to get them pretty much close to what you actually want because it won't take much of a dip. Uh, it's a bit hard to see. It's um, I, I used to have a, like an analog one, <laughs> but it's all got digital now. Um, and the analog one is like oh, ridiculously old. It's nearly as old as me. <laughs> but yeah, so there we go. Like I've got five volts, 5.02 or so. I mean, that's perfect. Uh, I'll just check the other voltages as well. Uh, so that's 12.1 ish. Uh, that is well good enough. And then the other one minus, so at minus one as well. Well, 12.1, sorry. So yeah. So that is, that'll be perfect. So when we plug that into uh, an Amiga, it shouldn't uh, take a dip, massive dip at all. And it should be well within spec. Beautiful. Right, 
So I'm now going to just use like my little prototyping drill. It's just like a little like hand drill. Uh, I'm just going to pop some screws and stuff in it. Uh, just so we can button it all down. Keep it nice and safe and solid. There are a couple of screws that go through into the case. Like you can see there's probably one on the, the side that go into the actual metal of the case itself. So it's not going to rattle about. It's got the gym seal of approval. Right then guys, I think that's going to be it for this one. So, obviously the next st stages, I'm going to be getting my Amiga and test it out. Same as I say, everything that, you know, you should really start with the power first. Make sure you've got a good, reliable power source. Everything is coming through right. Because the last thing you want to do is, is have a perfectly good piece of equipment, and then you just blow it up with a faulty power supply. So, but the part of troubleshooting is start from the beginning... And then work your way through. There we go. Right then. See you in the next one.